In this episode of the Backpacking Series, we head from Bangkok up to Chiang Mai and Chiang Mai. It's a mixture of tourism and working throughout the video, and I also touched on what's been going on for me, mental health edition. We made it to the airport. We're in Dong Mueang. Sam's really excited about Port Bulgogi. No, you are. <laughs> um, there's a place called Bon Chon in Dong Mueang Airport. We made it through. I got my bag like double checked because I forgot my mic was in there. And obviously my road mic is really big and looks really strange on camera while well, like on x-ray. I was like, oh no, what have I forgot? And then I realized it was my mic and she was like, what is this? But she touched my um, gel and I was like, it's gel. And then she was, she was like, no, inside. And I was like, oh, I looked at the x-ray and I realized what she was pointing to. I was like, oh, that's a microphone. And she was like, oh, okay, that's fine. And then like let my back go. I was like, oh, thank God. Cause I would have been really upset if they took my mic off me. I don't know why they would have, but you know that like split second fear when you're in the airport and something's wrong. You're like, ah, what's happening? gonna have a look around get some food and that's pretty much it until we fly we went straight to sylvie's as soon as we left the airport and a grab to check in sam and i stayed here last time we were in chiang mai and it was nice enough for a party weekend little did i know at the time that i was about to head into a fairly major mental health spiral that same weekend chiang mai is one of my favorite places in thailand and it holds a lot of great memories it feels like a safe haven for me and i know my way around really well so i can operate more on autopilot here I'm familiar with the little side streets and my favourite food carts still around from the last time I was in the city. There's a particularly great noodle soup cart just over the main road from Sylvie's Hostel and simply seeing it there made that nostalgic feeling whole again. What we don't always recognise is that feeling safe allows us to feel the things we've been saving for a rainy day. Being back in Chiang Mai was my safety piece to let go of those sort up emotions. All of my fears, little traumas, emotional suppression and ignorance came to the surface here. I cried for hours over two days and just let myself get to the depths of it. I had an ego death in Chiang Mai. I had to let go of a past version of myself and forgive and accept what this new version will bring. It definitely wasn't easy and I had a lot to work through over those two days. But really, experiencing that ego death was the best thing that could have happened to me at that time. Good morning, gang. It is, I don't even know what day it is actually. Um... It is Tuesday the 27th of February. We are in Chiang Rai now. I don't think I've actually made a vlog since Bangkok. I think I skipped the whole of Chiang Mai um, for various reasons. But anyway, we're in Chiang Rai now. This is the start of our second day. We got here yesterday about 12. We were able to check straight into our hotel room, so that was really nice. And we pretty much just ate food, had boba. The boba was so good. I took a picture of it and I'll insert it here. Um, what else did we do? Went to the night bazaar, can't lie, maybe the most underwhelming night bazaar I've been to in Asia. And then we just came home, I did some meditation and stuff, read a little bit and went to bed. So not the most exciting day, but it was good for the soul, so it was good. Today we are having pretty much a full work day. So I'm gonna take you along with me on a day working as I travel. Um, we're just going for breakfast now, so we're going to the Hungry Nest, hopefully, if we can get in there. I think it's pretty busy on a regular day, so hopefully we can get in there. Then we're gonna do bookings of the slow boat to Lao and a day tour through Chiang Rai because we realized it's so far between all places and we're not riding bikes and stuff right now. It's just gonna be easier to book a day tour. It's about 20 pounds, like a thousand baht for pretty much all of them. So we're gonna book a day tour for tomorrow and then Thursday we'll leave for the slow boat to Lao, hopefully. So we're gonna try and book a place on that as well. So we'll need to get money out at some point. Then this afternoon I've got a coaching call with one of my clients. Some more work, I need to get so much edited. Like you haven't even seen the Bangkok vlog yet. It's, I'm pretty far behind. I gotta do some recording and stuff for coaching. And then, yeah, we'll probably go for dinner again. I think we're gonna to go to Barab or something. Barab, Barab. I don't really know how to say it, but that's plan for today. Let's go get some breakfast. When we got to Chiang Rai, I was feeling miles better already. Just by allowing myself to go to the depth of that pain and sit with it. I had to feel it to release it, and the relief it brought was so noticeable. It didn't mean it was over. I still had more to understand about what I was going through, but it allowed me to see what hurt me and why. I could recognize why I had suppressed it and give myself grace, because that suppression let me survive in a moment of time that I needed to. But it was time to finally feel it so I could move on. Mental health is a strange one. 
We have standards that we let drop or boundaries that we allow people to cross when we aren't feeling mentally strong. This is where emotional intelligence and discipline come in so handy. Being able to be human and have human moments like this when I was experiencing this pain, but also have the emotional intelligence to delve into why and how it was happening so that I could let it pass and move on is one of the most valuable skills I have. I allowed myself to be vulnerable and I was repaid with a new lease of creativity, joy and passion for things that I felt so fearful of, not days beforehand. I could go through all of this and still jump on business tasks and support my clients because I have the ability to hold it all simultaneously and not let one area of my life deeply affect another. I can never emphasize just how much your life can change if you can spend a little time getting to know your own emotions and thought patterns a little bit better. Good morning from us. We are just on our way to our next hotel because we've got the Chiang Rai uh, loop tour today. Um, but we need to get picked up from the other hotel because we need to check into the other hotel when we get back. It's about quarter to eight in the morning. We get picked up between eight and a half eight. It's only a five minute walk to the other hotel, hopefully. That's what we're doing this morning. So let's kickstart the Chiang Rai loop tour. We have arrived at the first temple. So we are at the white temple now. Um, we didn't realize we've got a private tour actually, instead of a group tour. So that's really good. Um, so we can spend as much time pretty much as we want, I'm guessing. So yeah, we're here now. Village name, uh, but in Thai we call Wat Si Khao. Wat is mean temple, Si Khao is mean white. Temple. This temple will be created by Thai national artist. Uh, his name is Chalem Chai Kho Sikpipat. A long name, difficult for you to remember him. <laughs> you can call Ajahn Lerm. Ajahn Lerm. Yes, Ajahn is mean teacher. Uh, teacher Lerm. Uh, he get the inspiration for build the temple uh, from Nan province. Uh, in the north of Thailand also the location over there we be had the uh, gold temple mm -hmm. uh, gold temple and silver temple uh, he got the inspiration from there and also he loved the king very much uh, loved the king who's passed away mm -hmm. yeah that's why he's built the temple for celebrate to him he's believe in the Buddha mm -hmm. uh, would like to teach to the people and show to the people uh, about the sin and merit, how the different, yeah. And when you visit the temple, right? After you across the bridge, yeah. uh, you cannot return back uh, because of beside of the bridge, both hand side will be had the stucco like this. Many many hands is represent of the hell. Mm. Uh, if you return back, like uh, your life down to the hell, oh. all the unlucky will become to you. It's better you straight ahead to the chapel. Over there will be represent of the nirvana or the paradise. Uh, all the lucky come to you over there. So we are just done at the White Temple and I think potentially the Gold Temple as well. I'm going to need to Google it. Sam doesn't think it is. It looks like a worship kind of thing instead of the Gold Temple. But um, we'll ask our tour guide as well. What? Oh, over there. So yeah, that has been our little visit to the Gold Temple. And I think we're off to the Blue Temple next or maybe the Black House. I'm not sure. He will let us know. Name of this temple, Wat Rong Sir Ten. Uh, Rong is mean river or canal. Sir so is mean tiger. Ten is mean dancing. The tiger dancing on the river temple. Got this name because of long time ago in this area there are a lot of tigers. And the people, local people around this village, see the tiger jump on the river, look like tiger dancing. Uh, that's why I call this temple Tiger Dancing on the River Temple. Here we are walking up the stairs to Alex's dismay. 
and horror that we didn't just get the taxi. It's a long walk, lots of stairs, and she's not happy about it whatsoever. How are you? I'm conscious of my energy levels and my asthma. You got your inhaler, it's fine. It's funny how insignificant you feel when faced with a new perspective. Standing as a small human underneath a huge statue, or at the top of a building looking out at the tiny buildings, even in a plane watching the world go by beneath you, wondering what all the lives below are up to. It's a reflective moment that brings me peace. We aren't meant to agonise over tiny details and get stuck for years in our trauma. We're meant to experience and live this life. That does include trauma and grief and sadness, but it's not where we end. We also get the joy and the excitement, the surprise and the thrill of this life. I know I'd rather tap into more of the good things than spend countless hours anxious and fearful over a mistake or a potential outcome that isn't real. I want to try new things. I want to travel the world and have an impact on thousands of lives for the better. I want to teach and love and share happy moments with other wonderful humans. I want to experience those low moments just to make the highs that much more worth it. Passed away already, and then got the son-in-law come to manage uh, this this house and change to be the museum. Uh, but before is the private land of Thai National Artist. Uh, Black House have around 40 years old already. Uh, the artist had the inspiration for the build the house from Indonesia. This land. Yeah. The first time they only uh, plant the tea plantation and uh, selling, yeah, export, export to another country and sell to the local people. I know how hard it is to live my days wondering when I could possibly smile next because I feel so achingly numb. I know what it's like to struggle getting out of bed and showing my face to the people who expect more from me. I know what it's like trying to prove something to everyone and feeling so separated from myself because it's not even who I want to be anymore. It's just what I think I have to be to feel that love and acceptance. I battled with myself for years in the attempt to mold myself to other people's expectations of who and what I should be, what I should do with my life, whether I have a boyfriend or what I'm going to do without someone else to love me. I decimated my self-worth because I believed I was too ugly and different from the people around me to ever be loved by someone just for being myself. So I made up a different person and tried to be her. I allowed people to treat me horribly because I thought it was better to be acknowledged for the bad things than to be ignored altogether. I let this mindset ruin my self-image and was truly mean for years because of it. The way I look no longer defines me. Other people's opinions, and attention no longer drives my thought processes. I respect my body and my mind to the highest level because I didn't before. And the decision to be my own support system was the growth point for every good thing to come. And this river passed six countries, China, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, and finished in Vietnam. A long journey around 4,000 kilometers. And the small river here, this is Ruak River. Yeah, Ruak River. Begin from uh, Myanmar, uh, finish, join into Mekong River. The color of the river will be different because of over there from ice, and this one from mountain, yeah, from the gray, from the ground. Yeah, that's why the color is different. And this, this area called Golden Triangle because of in the past, if you would like to buy opium, you change by gold. Ah, that's why I call Golden. Ah, and the triangle is represent of three countries. Ah, so you can see, not the land over there look like triangle, not that. <laughs> We are at the Golden Triangle. We are in the border between three countries. So over here, this strip of land that you're seeing and these mountain ranges, I'm sure, is Myanmar, Myanmar. I keep saying it wrong every time. 
this here is Lao, and then obviously we're stood in and on Thailand. Um, but yeah, this is Lao. We're going to be in Lao tomorrow, and we will not be in <laughs> Myanmar. But yeah, I just thought it was really cool. I just FaceTime my parents, and they don't seem that bothered. My mum thinks it's cool, but my dad is like, okay, be safe. <laughs> and this is the Mekong River, which we will be floating down for two days over the next two days. Hopefully it's cool and breezy and relaxing. I've just been stood here for a while taking photos and just looking at the boats go by. So I think we're gonna head to the Opening Museum next and maybe something else after that, but I'm not sure. We are in three countries, kind of. <laughs> We just went to the Opium Museum in just literally under the Golden Triangle viewpoint is what I'm looking for. The Opium Museum is actually pretty cool. Like it's not super huge, but I kind of prefer short and sweet museums over like, you have to spend three hours in there reading all the information and it's really overwhelming. So to me, that was a perfect museum. To other people that like really in depth and long museums, that's probably not what you're looking for. However, uh, how much is it to get in? 50 baht. 50 baht per person to get in, which is fine. And a postcard. And a postcard. Oh yeah, we got cool postcards. And then at the museum, I picked up this little bracelet because I'm going to do a bracelet in each place because I don't have enough space in my bag to get like gifts or like actual things. What I would prefer to get is, um, sorry, our driver just walked past us. <laughs> What I prefer to get is notebooks, to be honest. I'd love to pick up a notebook in each place. However, I definitely do not have the space for a notebook in each place. So we're doing the next best thing, which is a bracelet in each place and being attacked by bugs. So yeah, that is pretty much what we just did. Ah, I'm being attacked. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna head to Chiang Shen, I think is how you say it. And I think it's another viewpoint maybe. And then we'll head back to Chiang Rai after that. I don't know what we're doing tonight. Probably get some dinner and go straight to sleep, to be honest, because we have to be up. Our bus is picking us up at five. So we're going to be up by probably like half four, quarter past, quarter past four probably, to get ready, showered and everything, ready to go. I choose to live differently now. I'm no longer restrained by an unbearable need for validation. I don't have to seek approval because I give myself permission now. I have the tools to recognize what's for me and what needs to be let go of. I can move forward with my life knowing that I have my own back even if no one else does. I accept me for who I am and love myself unconditionally. I am proud to be Alex. I hope you can look in the mirror and show yourself this kind of love and devotion because you deserve it endlessly.